The Forest of the Fallen Giants. The last episode of Story Mode focused on Hade's Tower of Flame and the origins of that place. In this episode, we explore the Forest of the Fallen Giants, and this place gives us a bit more of an understanding about the world and our place within it. We are undead. Our body is rotting and our mind is disintegrating. We came here to cure this curse. That was our purpose. The curse is a part of life itself. No one will ever be rid of it. But as we travel through the land, we discover that Drang Lake is the land of lost purpose. Many undead you meet actually forget why they're there, and you aren't any exception to this rule. Our journey has only just begun, and we're already being introduced to new goals. Goals that aren't our own. Are you the next monarch? Or merely a pawn of fate? We came here to cure the curse. And maybe finding the king will give us answers, but we don't know whether they're going to be the ones we seek. It's not strange, given her dialogue, that we're instantly drawn to trust her. Bearer of the curse, I will always be at your side, until hope has fully withered. The Emerald Herald gives us the direction and the tools we need to progress in the world. She asks for nothing in return, yet she pushes us in a very singular direction. Go on and see the king. He who made Drangleg what it once was. He who peered at the essence of the soul. King Vendrick. Beyond the bonfire lies the Forest of the Giants, where a great battle precipitated the kingdom's downfall. The warriors who fell there still clutch their swords. You need not be afraid, for the battle is done. The combatants, freed forever. And so we travel to the Forest of the Fallen Giants, and maybe, just maybe, we can hope to discover what has happened in this land. We decide to seek the King, and discover the story behind the war-torn land he left behind. Simply push to uncover the story of the world we find ourselves in, and those are our goals right now. And yet, you can't quite shake the feeling that you didn't quite come here to become a monarch. You came here to cure the curse, and yet it feels like you're serving somebody else's purpose once again. Regardless, we seek the king. And we start in a forest where his war took place long ago. The forest has grown around a rundown fort that was severely damaged during the King's War with the Giants. The first enemies we encounter are the Hollow Infantry, clearly low-ranking soldiers who were tasked with defending the outskirts of the fort. And it's clear that they hollowed long ago, from the rundown look of their equipment. But even now, even though they're hollowed, they still defend the fort and clutch their weapons, as some muscle memory seems to exist even when hollowed. Individually, they're very weak, but they're really aggressive and they'll attack you on sight. And you have to use that to your advantage, you try to fight them individually. They have very little combat sense. We climb into a structure that would once have been a tower on the outskirt of the fort, but it's been eroded by nature. And in the center is a Hade Knight. Hade fell into the sea long ago, and it resembles the land of Anor Londo. And this is where Guinevere, the Princess of the Way of White, watched over her subjects. These knights are passive. Even while hollowed, they don't have this desire to attack. Hollows seem to retain some basic instinct from the person they once were. For example, the infantry know how to use their weapons, and they continue to defend the places they hollowed within. Could it be then that this white, wayward knight also retains some sense of who he was? Perhaps these white knights once aided travelers, or it might just not be in their nature to cut them down. When provoked though, he defends himself. We take him down with lightning because we will put this knight's equipment to better use than he will. His lightning sword scales with faith and it's going to be our weapon for a while. There are some clues as to the origins of this knight, and maybe you understand what I kind of hinted at before. There are other white knights of Hade within Drang Lake, and we'll have to discuss them again when we get to them, because they definitely have a story. We make our way to the fort, past the royal soldiers and the hollow infantry, and inside we find Melentia. You're a stranger to this land. Oh, we get as strangers these days. Everybody's going to run off. <laughs> Drang Lake's been a pile of rubble since the war, fought long, long ago. When the giants crossed the sea, seemed like the battles would never end. 
It's said that wherever a giant fell in battle, a tree grew in its place. We get this information from the seed of the tree of giants, and I quote, Death is not the end, for anything that has ever once lived remains a part of the great cycle of regeneration. One of the biggest themes in Dark Souls 2 is regeneration and rebirth. This theme is in the gameplay, it's in the setting, and it's in the game's universe as a whole. Keep the idea of rebirth in mind as we progress, and ask yourself, is this world dying, or is it being reborn? Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, before coming to this area solo, I decided to summon a few white phantoms to test out the online functionality, and then this happened. This is why you keep firebombs in your inventory. So good. Around here, we meet Pate. Hello there. Traveling all alone in these treacherous times. Well, I hope you have a very good reason. Oh, hogwash. Who am I to judge? <laughs> My name is Pate. I journey hither and thither on a sort of treasure hunt, you might call it. Be careful out there. There's talk of unsavory bandits who prey upon travelers like yourself. Oh yes, you be cautious if you go any farther. There's treasure in there for certain, but the entrance locks from behind. I saw the same design earlier, and it's the same contraption, I'm sure. I was with this warrior, you see, and he insisted that he go inside first. <laughs> the rather brusque fellow tried to swipe the loot for himself, but it trapped him inside. I still have the gent's ring. I do hope he wasn't harmed. I'll leave this one to you. I'm worried about what might be inside. Well, I see you managed to escape. Oh, take this. It allows undead to call out for help to one another, across the fissures between worlds. With luck, somebody will lend you a hand. He gives us a white summoned soapstone, and we're going to summon him for the next boss fight, because it's good to get help with tricky patches in the game, right? This also furthers his quest line, and we're going to see him later in the game if we keep him alive during this fight. We've taken an elevator down to the depths of the earth, where the last giant lies. Long ago, the king sought out the giants across the sea. He waged war with them, and then he returned and brought peace to his kingdom, but the peace was short-lived. Just as the curse of the undead was taking over his kingdom, the giants came for revenge. We know this from events later in the game, so I won't elaborate for now, but for now, know that this is supposedly the last giant in Drang Lake, and it hates you. It hates you so much that it'll rip off its dead arm just so it can reach you more effectively. And this hate could be something to do with all the human weapons thrust into it from all sides, or perhaps it's the iron shackles around its feet and arms. Or perhaps it's something else, but we'll have to explore more of the world before we can figure that out. Regardless, you defend yourself and you acquire the soul of the last giant. It tells you that the giant was preparing for its final rest, and that, despite this, his soul remained magnificent despite what it had been through. And there's another item later in the game that talks about the determination of these giants and how they have this will that is unbreakable. So now that we have the soldier's key, we can open up all the locked doors in the fort, and eventually we make it outside to these ruined ramparts. The huge statues here have crumbled and broken in a long forgotten war, and here we transition to our new game plus character where we fight the pursuer. The pursuer. According to his soul, the creature hunts down those branded by the curse of the undead, and that's as if every undead soul that he claims will atone one of his sins. Also, according to the guide, he's carried by a crow, even though I think it looks like an eagle. Anyway, this is a symbol of sin related to the goddess Velka. And he gets a little bit more than he bargained for with us. You can either take him out using these nearby ballista, or you can learn his pattern and dodge his attacks quite easily. Not much else is known about the pursuer, but we haven't seen the last of him. There are 10 things in the Forest of the Fallen Giants that you probably missed, and I'd love to see if you could get all 10. The link on screen will take you there. But that does it for the story within the Forest of the Fallen Giants. I'll see you guys next time. Also, I'm currently running a campaign to improve my videos and to be able to afford better content, and it's going great. I've recently ordered a much better microphone that'll reduce all the reverb, and I've got better recording equipment in general. And the thing is, all the people who kindled this channel are responsible for some of the amazing content that's going to appear on my channel in the next year. 
To learn more about what it's about, just click the bonfire. But regardless of whether you do or not, just thank you so much for watching my videos. I'll see you next time.